In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph a rational function when the numerator and the denominator are linear functions. Now, if you take a look at this example 3 here, we can see that the top and the bottom are both linear functions. Now, from here, it's hard to identify the asymptotes. It's hard to define the intercepts as well. So what we need to do is we need to manipulate the function that looks like this and change it to a form like this that we already know how to graph. Now, you might simply think, oh, well, I can separate the two and write this as 3x divided by x plus 1 minus 2 over x plus 1. Now, yes, we do get a number over a linear function, which gives us the first part, but then we also have to have this plus k, which is supposed to be just a single number, and we don't have that here because we have a 3x over x plus 1. So what we're going to do is, so let me erase this first. What I need to do is kind of, I need to figure out how to eliminate this x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually spread this out. So I have y equals 3, and I'm going to say that I'm going to factor out the, th the 3. So I still have an x, and I'll notice I have a plus 1 in the denominator. So I'm going to create that plus 1. Now I can't just add 1 for fun. I actually need to also subtract 1, so that when I actually add 1 and subtract 1, what I'm really doing is, I'm adding 0. Uh, the minus 2, I'm going to leave that on the outside. We're not going to change that. And all of this will be divided by x plus 1. All right. So what I'm going to do is I actually only want the x plus 1 inside the bracket. So I need to get rid of this minus 1 at the back inside. So I'm going to write this as 3 bracket x plus 1. And to get rid of this minus 1, I outside of the brackets, I'm going to distribute the 3 into this. So now I have minus 3 and then minus 2. So this is still all over x plus 1. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of simplifying. I'm going to join my minus 3 and minus 2 to give me negative 5 all over x plus 1. And now you might be able to see what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to use that property of adding and subtracting fractions, and I'm going to split this now into two terms. So I have 3 bracket x plus 1, all divided by x plus 1, and then now I have a second term, minus 5 over x plus 1. Now I can see that my x plus 1s in the first fraction, these will cancel off. So I'm going to be left with 3 minus 5 over x plus 1, which almost looks like this form over here that I have in the box. But let me just rewrite it so that it might be a little bit easier for you to see. So I'm going to write this as y equals negative 5, and then over x plus 1, and then plus 3. All right, so this is good. Now I have it in the form that we can always recognize. Okay. So from here, I can see that um, I have a non-permissible value and that x cannot equal negative 1. Okay. So I'm going to draw my table of values. And I'm going to put negative 1 in the middle of my table. And I'm going to choose some other numbers. Now the numbers that I choose, I can... Just choose one on either side. And then the next number that I choose, I'm going to kind of pick on purpose. So what I mean is, if I pick 1, I have to go negative 5 divided by 2. So that doesn't work very nice. But I notice if I do 2, I get 5 divided by 3. That doesn't work very nice. But I can see that if I pick 4, I'm going to have 4 plus 1, and 5 can divide by that. So I'm going to choose the number 5. Oh, sorry, the number 4. And going in the other direction, knowing that 0 to 4 is 4 spaces, I'm going to go 4 spaces back. And that will give me negative 6. Let's just see if that works nicely too. So actually, let's do this now. So we have negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5. It does work. We get 1. And then 1 plus 3 is 4. When I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get 8, 
And negative 1 we already knew doesn't work, so that's going to be undefined. When I plug in 0, I get negative 5 plus 3, so that's going to be negative 2. And then I plug in 4, I get negative 1 plus 3, and that gives me positive 2. Okay, so let's graph this, and I can see that I have my asymptote at negative 1. And then remember that the constant value here, the 3, gives me my horizontal asymptote, which is going to be at y equals 3. Okay, so I can actually list my asymptotes already. So I have x equals 1 and y equals 3. Okay, so let's plot these four points that I have. And I have negative 6 and 4, negative 2 and 8, and I also have 0 and negative 2 and 4 and 2. Okay, now if you kind of want to pick some numbers to see what's happening in between here, we can pick some other numbers such as negative 4. And when we put in negative 4, we get negative 4 plus 1. So that's going to give me negative 3. So then negative 5 divided by negative 3, that's going to give me about 1 point, well, 1 and 2 thirds. So that's going to give me about 1.666. So plus 3 is going to give me about 4.6. So that's going to be around here. Oops. Okay. So you can also do that with more points. So you can also pick negative 3 and figure that out. But I'm pretty good and confident that these three points will give me a graph that looks like this. Okay, And then knowing that this is a distance of 3 left, and then kind of 1 and 0.666 up, according to my asymptotes, I can now go 3 in the other direction and then kind of go that 1.666 down just to give me an extra point. So now I can draw my three points. Oops. So now I can connect these three points going this way without actually having to recalculate what the value was at 2. And if you want, you can check that out. When I plug in 2, um, I'm going to get uh, 2 plus 1 which is 3, negative 5, divided by 3. That's going to be negative 1.66 plus 3. That gives me about 1.3. So that's 2, and then 1.3 is about there, which is correct. All right, so I identified my asymptotes, and I also have to find my intercepts. So my intercepts, so to find my y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So my y-intercept is going to be 0 minus 2, 0 plus 1. So my y-intercept is equal to negative 2. And then to find my x-intercept, I am now going to plug in 0 for y. And then that equals 3x minus 2 over x plus 1. Now it doesn't really matter what's happening in the denominator because when I multiply both sides by x plus 1, it's going to be 0. So I'm going to actually ignore my denominator. Alright, so I can now move the 2 over, so 2 equals 3 over x, so then x equals 2 over 3. So x equals 2 over 3 is my x-intercept, and y equals negative 2 is my y-intercept. So let's just double check that we can see this. So y equals negative 2. Yes, that's correct down here. And x equals 2 thirds. And that looks a little bit about 2 thirds. I'm probably a little bit off. It probably should have been a little bit more over here. And there you go.